morning and happy Sunday, Journey family. We are glad that you are here to worship with us today. Before we begin, we have a few announcements. The first announcement, if you're on Facebook, please like and share um, and invite other people um, into our Journey community. Second announcement, Team Journey. It's time. Team World Vision, Team Journey. It's time to get going. So today we're going to talk more about that, but do know that you can sign up on teamjourney.org. What is this we talk about? We run and we walk to move our feet to raise money for clean water for kids and people around the world who don't have clean water. It's crazy to think that it is 2021 and there are people in the world that do not have access to clean water. World Vision does a great job with that and so we definitely want to be a part of that and it is our mission here at The Journey to, to provide clean water um, for those who are without. So stay tuned, there's more on that today. You're gonna find out a lot more about that. Okay, we have this um, Church Center app that's pretty great. You can find out all things Journey there. You can give there, you can do all kinds of things. You can find out when the next events are, you can find out about Food Pantry, you can sign up for groups or to help or whatever. All these things are on the Church Center app. So if you don't have it, that'd be a good thing to get. So that's another thing. Now, Tim is doing this sermon series on winning the war in your mind. I don't know about you, but sometimes the mind is a treacherous place. And I do believe that God has a better plan for us than what our mind can come up with. So today you're going to get some tools about how to win that war in your mind. Okay, so stay tuned. It's going to be good. So last but not least, the call to worship, calling all of you to worship. And when I was a kid, we used to sing this song. It went, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Let me do it again. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Psalm 147.5 says, great is our Lord and mighty in power. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. And then in verse 7, it says, Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. We have a lot to be thankful for. And our God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing our God cannot do. So right now, let's worship the God that we know. my 
ground where the grave did. All my shame remains left for dead in your way. You crashed those age old games. You left no stone unturned. You stepped out of that grave. You shouldered me.
Jesus, I pray, let your light shine in, in our hearts, in our lives, in your church, and through your church this morning as we gather to worship. Lord, that we might see in the midst of um, all the struggles and challenges of a broken world and, and all the darkness that, um, that surrounds us, that your light brings life, that your light brings hope, that your light brings healing, that your light brings restoration, that your light brings understanding and knowledge, that your light brings truth. Let your light shine, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm uh, so glad that uh, you're with us today. Uh, we have a great worship service this morning, really excited about uh, what's going on in the life of the journey. I have a great message. Uh, well, Maybe that's presumptuous. I think I have a great message for you today. I think it's something that's really practical. It's going to help you um, win the war in your mind. Uh, but before we get there, there's something else that I'm really excited about. Uh, for the past five years, starting in 2016, the journey has been a part of World Vision's um, campaign to end the clean water crisis in the world, that there are millions of people in the world today that still don't have access to clean water, and we partnered up with uh, World Vision and churches around the country and, and literally churches around the world to address that, to address that issue. And uh, this has been the journey on mission for the last five years. It's been um, a, a resource that's really fueled, fueled life into the life of the journey, but also allowed us to, to make a difference in the world. Um, if you look at the slide that's on, on your screen right now, if you're in the sanctuary up on the, the screen in here, that over five years, the journey has raised $219,000 uh, for clean water projects. You know, people um, outside of, um, like, they don't know us. They actually think that we're like this huge, gigantic church because of what we've been able to accomplish in this regard. Um, and, and we are a gigantic church um, in our impact in the world, but not necessarily in uh, the size of our congregation. Um, but God does mighty things through um, small things. 
And uh, so I'm just, I really celebrate this. Uh, this morning, I want to um, turn this over for a few minutes to, to Deb, who has been uh, one of our um, leading fundraisers in this campaign, has had a huge impact, and uh, is very passionate about it. And then after that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Ron Thomas. Uh, Ron's been running with us, uh, cheering us on since 2016. Uh, running with us since 2017, has, ha has a great story, has had a huge impact, and we actually are turning our team captainship over to Ron this year, and he's graciously agreed to assume that role, and he's going to tell you how you can get involved. So, Deb, take it away. Okay, so you might be thinking, I bet you're wondering why you shouldn't do this. But maybe you're thinking, why should I do this? Am I right? Okay. Why should I do this? Okay. In World Vision, in Team World Vision, as most of you already know, we talk a lot about remembering our why. And um, this is a picture right here of dirty water. It's going to be on the screen, too. Um, I took that picture, and it, it's from a, a well in Zambia. And we went to this community. And we were driving around Zambia, very bumpy roads in Africa, very, very bumpy. And we get to um, a, a community. I asked our driver. He had been telling us all this stuff. Tim's asking questions. I finally ask a question. I say, what about the impact of the dirty water for nutrition, for, like, children? And how much of that are you seeing, like, it, with people with special needs because of the lack of clean water? through the, when they were in their mother's womb, all the way through childhood to lack that clean water and how it affects brain development. Because, you know, I'm a teacher, I'm a special education teacher. It's, it's what I, these are the things I think about. And the guy, the driver wouldn't answer me. He just like, all right, you know, and he kind of blew me off. I'm kind of like, what in the world? Then we went to this community and we went to this house and the, the family, I think they maybe forgot we were coming. Because everywhere we went in Africa, people are, woo, you're here! And everybody's dancing and singing and all this stuff. But this family, I mean, the kids didn't have, because they put on their best clothes when we come. And the one girl had her shirt on backwards, and it was, it was kind of a hot mess, right? Grandparents, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, one, two, three, four, five kids, and every single one of them looked, had that look in their eyes like they didn't understand everything that was going on. And so I kind of got my answer. And the little boy that was there, he was, looked like he was three years old and he was actually six years old. The sister, who was the oldest of the children, somebody had come to their house and said, um, hey, we have a job for her. She can be a maid at the hotel. It wasn't, that's what it was, it was not that. It was sex trafficking. And she got pregnant and came back. So she actually ended up coming back to her family. But now she's pregnant. This is a community that still does not have clean water. And this is water from the well that they get their water from. And that well, we were there in July. And by the end of the month, they said the well was going, that well was going to dry up. And this family lived up the hill from this well. So carrying water, I, I can't even imagine. It wasn't that far, but it was uphill. But at the end of that month, this same family had to walk, I think they said, um, six kilometers one way to the next well. And they would have to do that probably two or three times a day. So that's all they do is just walk for water all day long. Okay, so that family, you could see the impact on the children. And I'm telling you, Journey, you have done a great job, not just a phenomenal job, in raising money for clean water. And because of those efforts, the, the chains are being broken, the, the chains of poverty. Um, I mean, it just is, you're breaking that for communities. So my hope is for that baby that is now born, that maybe in that community they will have clean water soon. There was some trouble in that community with um, figuring out where to put wells because it was a lower-lying area, so it's, it's complicated. But the engineers are working on it, trying to figure out how to get that community um, clean water. So how do we break the cycle for that family and generations to come? So that's our why, and that's why we're doing this. So Journey, you guys are awesome. So if you think, well, I haven't done that before, maybe I'll do it. Do it, okay? It's easy, just do it, okay? It's not easy. I mean, it's easy to say you're going to do it. So just say it today, and it'll, it'll, the rest will fall in place. Trust me, okay? Do you believe me? 
<laughs> You're going, ah, I don't know. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about how to do it. So consider doing it, even if you've never done it before. Consider doing it um, because, Journey, you make a difference in this world and in this community. People are seeing you out there. So um, I, I just want to do a cartwheel or something to convince you. I don't know, something. I'm not going to. But Okay, Ron, you're up. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ron Thomas, if you don't know me. Uh, and I am now the team captain for Team Journey. Woo! So we are going to be doing the 2021 um, Long Beach Marathon and Half Marathon. Some of us are doing the full marathon, some are doing the half marathon. Now, we've been talking a lot about uh, Team World Vision and the great work that they've been doing around the world. And Tim asked me to do a quick walkthrough on uh, how you can register. Now, before I do that, I just want to go off script here a little bit, Tim, for your slides. Okay, what do you, Tim, click the clear all button. Uh oh, okay, never mind, just keep going. Okay, so just so you know, for those that don't know me, I used to weigh over 500 pounds. And when we started in 2016, that's when I was at that weight. I didn't run that year, so I was a supporter on the sidelines. And then I had gastric sleeve surgery, and then I started losing the weight, and then in May of 17, Team World Vision came, and I decided it's time, I, need, I can walk it. I can walk a half marathon. I was 380 pounds at that point. By the time I got to the actual marathon in October, I weighed 314. So what is that, 60, 65 pounds, something like that? Now I'm sitting at around 240-ish. So um, if you don't think you can do it, I'm here to tell you, you probably can. You can do it. And we really would love to have you on the team. Even if you can't be on the team, we'd love to have you as a supporter even if it's like cheering us on on, the, on the, the roadway. That's what it's all about, man. So we're going to go to the, the quick and easy way to pull out uh, to, to do the um, registration. Go to the next slide, please. I created a link, join.teamjourney.org. That goes straight to where you can join the team. Um, again, it's join.teamjourney.org. So uh, next slide. If you've run, jogged, or walked with Team World Vision in the past, you've probably already logged in, or you have a login. Next slide. So all you would need to do is click on that link right there on the page, type in your email address and password, and you're good to go. If this is your first time that you're going to do this, I'm just going to say, woohoo! And uh, so you would want to uh, click on the, or fill in the next section, next slide, the lower section where it's got the name, email address, create password. From there, you're just going to go click on and go to the next slide. Uh, from here, you're going to have the option of registering for the half or the full. That choice is completely up to you. Next slide. Uh, team Journey should already be populated. Um, but if it's not, then where it says Roll, just click the, oh, next slide. Just click the uh, Join a Team button, and it will give you a drop-down menu that you can scan down and find Team Journey and just click on it. Next slide. Here is where you're going to set up your fundraising goal. You're going to provide registration details. Next slide. Uh, then the next slide is you're going to provide your address and all the other good stuff. Uh, next slide. You're just going to scroll down a little bit, click all the appropriate boxes, and click the continue button. Next slide. From here, you will confirm your info, making sure you spelled your name properly, and click submit. 
Since I'm already, already registered, and I didn't want to register again, I do not have slides for anything beyond this. But I did speak with Don Lee yesterday, who is the director for the Team World Vision Long Beach event, and he informs me that Team World Vision is handling the registrations with the Long Beach Marathon Association. So you do it all in one place. Um, now, some of you may have been thinking, hey, Ron, I was registered to do this last year, and then the whole pandemic hit. If you were registered last year, and you deferred rather than doing it virtually, then you should have received an email from Motive Sports about, on or about September 22nd of last year, confirming that you would be registered for 2021. If you didn't get that, or if you didn't, can't find it, talk to me, email, call, text, whatever, and I'll work you through it. So I'm really hoping you will consider joining, whether it's marathon, half marathon, being a donor, being a spectathlete, which is a spectator athlete, on the uh, side of the road as we're running along cheering us on, you have no idea how glad we are to see familiar faces cheering us on when we're doing 13.1 or 26.2 miles or handing us Otter Pops. And that's it, thank you so much. Thanks, Deb. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate uh, your leadership in that. And uh, can't wait to see you all out there. We're going to have a great campaign this year. If I had a dollar for every mental lap that I've taken between 1 and 5 a.m. over the last of 30, 40 years, right? If at the time I'm laying in bed and my brain's circling laps, if I had a dollar for every lap I've taken, Right now, I would be sitting on a beach in the Bahamas sipping an umbrella drink, right? My brain works overtime and too often between 1 and 5 a.m. And I think about the craziest things in the middle of the night, like things like, I wonder if that water damage from the leak that happened 12 years ago caused so much damage that my floor is now sinking into the... Um, crawl space under my house. I wonder if my pool guy is right that the water is really evaporating that fast, or is there really a leak in my pool and he just doesn't want me to know it because he doesn't want to have to fix it. Is it true that in California that when an earthquake happens that you just need to hold your breath because all of our houses are going to crumble from termite damage? I wonder things like if that light on the transmission that I just bought for my son really is meaning the transmission is just needs a tweak or if it's going bad. And if it goes bad, then it's going to cost $4,000. It costs $4,000. And where in the world are we going to get the money to fix a dumb car? And why did I make such a dumb decision at 3.30 in the morning? I think about things like what does the church look like in a post-pandemic world? What does a church look like after people have not come to church for 15 months? And do people come back to church? And so glad that there are people here today that testify that, yes, one day the people will come back to church. And some of you are still sitting at home. And God bless you for being there. And I hope that one day you will come back to church too because I'm thinking about you in the middle of the night. <laughs> and sometimes I think in the middle of the night, wow, I haven't seen somebody for like four weeks in church. I wonder where they're at. I wonder what's going on. I wonder what they're thinking. I wonder if something happened. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I wonder about things about my health and whether that knee is just a bum knee that's going to go away and get better soon or if it's going to make me a handicap for the rest of my life and I'll never be able to run another marathon. I wonder about the world and where it's going, what's happening in politics and all that stuff. All those things over and over and over again and a thousand other things. And you know what? Those mental laps do for me, they steal a lot of my beauty sleep. And I know what you're thinking, Tim, you're a pretty handsome guy. But just think about it. If I had all that sleep back, right, I'd be like Brad Pitt. Thank you, right? They create a lot of anxiety. You know what they don't do? They never, ever solve any problems. 
I, I, they never bring me to any conclusions. They never believe, bring me to a decision and say, okay, well, this is the problem, but here's the solution, and now this is what I'm going to do about it that leads to some kind of positive outcome. We're in a series called Winning the War in Your Mind. And I, the title um, comes from a book that was written by Craig O'Shell. The, the title of the book is Winning the War in Your Mind. Uh, and, and some other resources that I've tapped into, some really, really powerful stuff. And, and if you just start with the title, right, the, there's a few things that, that I think it tells us right out of the bat. Um, first of all, it says there's a war, right? And war implies, hey, there, there's a battle going on. And, and when there's a battle... That there are things that, that, that someone that's engaged in a battle, that there are things that are important, things like communication, getting the right information to the right places, strategy, planning, offensive maneuvers. How are we going to attack? Defensive maneuvers. maneuvers. How are we going to protect ourselves? There's a battle going on. There's a war. And it's, in, it's a battle that's taking place in your mind. It's a battle that takes place between our ears. It's a battle about the things that we think about and the things that we think about the things that we think about and how those thoughts affect our emotional, mental well-being. And, and it's a battle, right, that's in your mind, and, and it's a battle that, that you want to win. Right? Winning the war in your own. We want to win this battle. E even if you're not a competitive person, right? I I'm a competitive person. M most of my family were really competitive people, and so we like to do competitive things. But even if you're not, even if you're not a competitive person, even if you don't consume your life in the middle of the night thinking about how am I going to win, you want to win this war. You want to win this one. Because your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Craig O'Shell says, our lives are moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And Scripture says this. We looked at this last week. If you missed last week's message, go back and listen to it. Scripture says this. Our lives are moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And science says the same thing. And if our lives then are moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts, then this is a battle that you want to win because you want your life to go where you want it to be, not where your thoughts from the middle of the night take you. And so we looked last week at the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. And he says in this passage, just summarize it quickly, he says, we live in a world that has gone awry. The things in the world aren't the way that they were supposed to be. The things in the world aren't the way that they were meant to be. And because we're in a world that isn't the way that it was meant to be, that there's a war being fought in this world. But he says, we're fighting in the war, but we're gonna, we don't fight with the same weapons that the world fights with. That we fight with spiritual weapons that have divine power to demolish strongholds. And you go on this passage, you see that what Paul's talking about is this war in our mind. He's talking about uh, strongholds in our mind, places in our mind that, that the enemy has taken captive and is holding us, these strongholds. He's saying we're fighting in this battle and we have divine power. And this divine power is God's truth. It's God's word. It's what God says is right about us. It's what God says is right about the world. We have these divine powers to demolish these strongholds that we have. Because we live in a broken world, there are, there are, the wiring in our brain has, has been messed up. It's been, wires are crossed. It's like we had this van one time and something happened. We went some kind of electrical field and all of a sudden it's like every time you turned on the turn signal, the radio went on. And you turn the turn signal on, the radio went off. And, and it's like, you know, our brains are working like that because the wires have been crossed. And what comes through into our minds comes out in our lives. And so Paul says in his passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he says, what we need to do is we need to capture every thought, every thought that enters into our brain. We need to capture it. We need to run it through this filter of God's truth. 
And he says, capture every thought, Paul says, capture every thought and make it obey Christ. Make it obey, bring it in alignment with God's truth. Capture every thought and make it obedient to Christ. In Romans chapter Paul, chapter 12, Paul says, do not be conformed to this world. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How are we going to change? How are we going to change? We're going to be changed by our minds being changed, by our minds being renewed. And, and so when we come to 2 Corinthians, that's what Paul's saying. Hey, that, I told this, the church in Rome, I said, do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is how you do it. Capture every thought and make it obedient. Make it obey Christ. So last week, the message was renew your mind. Renew your mind by replacing lies that you've picked up, that we pick up from, from messages that we get from um, dysfunctional families, from messages that we get from, from our peers, from ne- messages that we get from, from media, from, from messages that we get through, through um, uh, adults that, that we encounter in, in school, from messages that we get from our bosses, coworkers, that aren't in alignment with truth. We, he says, we're going to take all those messages and say, is this the truth or is it a lie? Is it telling me the truth about me? Is it telling me the truth about the world or is it deceptive? And to bring those all into obedience, to bring them to alignment with Christ, replacing lies with truth. And this morning, we're going to take one more step in that direction, right? One more step. Now that we're replacing our lies with truth, we're going to renew our brains by turning our ruminations into meditations. Turning our ruminations into meditations. Ruminations. Maybe uh, you're not familiar with that word. You probably are, right? Ruminations are the things that I talked about at the beginning. It's the mental lapse that our brains take when we start thinking about things, but we're not really thinking about them in any kind of focused direction way. We're just like thinking thoughts that go round and round and round, and they never take us any way, and they never change anything. Rumination is a negative experience. Rumination creates anxiety. In our minds. In fact, rumination is like the the anxiety producing um, on steroids. Right? When you start ruminating, you are sure to follow quickly with worrying. And, and so, Paul coaches us on how it is that we renew our minds, capture every thought, make it obedient to Christ, and now says, in moving from, from ruminations to meditations, he picks this up, and it's in his um, letter to the church at Philippians. Uh, it's, it's a letter, it's a great letter. If you've ever heard the passage, rejoice in the Lord always, again, I say rejoice, right? Rejoice in the Lord always, Paul says, again, I say rejoice. It sounds like something that somebody would write if they're sitting on a beach in the Bahamas sipping umbrella drinks, right? Rejoice in the Lord always. Life is great. This is fantastic. Paul wrote those words in a Roman prison. Paul wrote those words. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice when he was in captivity. And and Rome didn't... Jail's no place to be. Prison's no place to be now. I understand that. But we do have laws about cruel and unusual punishment. Rome didn't have that, right? They didn't care about how much you suffered in your captivity. And Paul, in that place, rejoiced in the Lord always. Well, how are we going to do that? He picks it up in Romans, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters... Finally, I got one, thing, one more thing I want to say to you. And what he doesn't say is, you know what? God sent me on this grand mission to preach the gospel to the whole Roman Empire. And now I'm locked up in a jail cell. God failed me. God let me down. God dropped the ball. You know, I did all this for him, and look where I'm at now. I'm sitting rotting in this jail. It's not what he says. From a Roman prison... He says, fix your thoughts on what is true. 
Fix your thoughts on what is honorable. Fix your thoughts on what is right, on what is pure, on what is lovely, on what is admirable. He he didn't say fix your thoughts on the worst case scenario. Fix your thoughts on all the terrible things that that could, might happen if things don't go the way that you think that they're going to go or the way that you, you want them to go. Think about things. Fix your thoughts on things. Focus your attention on things that are excellent and praiseworthy. The King James, Version, King James Version says, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, we meditate, we meditate, we meditate, we focus on those things. Meditation. Now, you might think, isn't, isn't meditation that like new age practice? And, and are we really, is that something that Christians are supposed to do? Is meditation something that we're supposed to do? And it's like, um, 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 right? Empty my mind of everything so I'm not thinking anything. Let me give you a different definition of meditation. It's actually a practice that Christians have used throughout um, the centuries and, and one that you find thoroughly grounded in the scripture. Meditation is to engage in a mental exercise, in the mental exercise of focusing your thoughts, focusing your thoughts, not ruminating, not letting them spin around in your brain, round and round and round, focusing your thoughts on a direction with intention. Meditation, focusing your thoughts on direction with intentionality. You find it all over Scripture. In Psalm 1, the very first psalm, the prayer book that that David assembled to, to teach us to pray. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Meditates on his law day and night. Meditates on God's truth. truth. Focuses on God's truth day and night. That person, he says, is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. What do you say? He says, your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts, and if your strongest thoughts are on God's word, on God's truth, it's going to produce this in your life. You're going to be like a well-watered tree planted by a stream. And if your thoughts aren't there, no, not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. In Psalm 119, I meditate, God, on your precepts and consider your ways. I'm focusing my my mind, God, I'm focusing my mind on your order of the world, on your purpose, on your direction, on your truth. Psalm 143, I meditate, God, on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I'm looking around, God, and I'm seeing the world that you made, and I'm doing it with intentionality, and I'm seeing all these amazing things that you've done in the world. And as I fix my, sight, my mind on those things, all these thoughts I have about God's power, God's strength, God's presence, God's purpose, I see your beauty, your wonder, your awe. Uh, there's a song right now that, I'm, that is kind of stuck in my head. I think we're going to be singing in a couple weeks. This is, the waves and winds still know your name. Right? The, 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 the waves and the wind, we have no control over them, but they still know God's name. They still know he reigns. They still know he's sovereign. Eastern meditation 
is often about how do I empty my mind of all the things that are in my brain and become just like this empty vessel to come to this place of, of calm or, or peace or serenity. Scriptural meditation, biblical meditation, Christian meditation is not about emptying our minds. It's about filling our minds with God's law, with God's love, with God's truth. Your mind to uncross all those wires that get crossed, that have been programmed to believe things that aren't true. To do that, we need to focus on what is true. We need to replace the lies with truth and then focus, meditate on, fix our eyes on those truths. I don't know about you, but my mind drifts quickly. Right? Anybody else? My mind drifts quickly. And you know what? When my mind drifts, it never drifts to a good place. When my mind drifts, it always drifts towards fear. It always drifts towards anxiety. It always drifts towards insecurity. But it can be reshaped. Scripture says this, Paul says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Science says this, right? They've done all this research mapping the brains and seeing that if you give different input to the brain, you can actually rewire those circuits so your mind processes things differently. And I got to say, I gotta, it's not easy. It's not easy, right? Because the things that we've been believing, the lives that tell us all this stuff about ourselves that doesn't help us, that doesn't serve us, that's not taking us to the place we want to go, those, those lies, we've been believing some of those things for 5, 10, 20, 30, 50 years, right? It's not easy, but it can be done. And when we do it, it is a game changer. When we focus our minds, we create new neural pathways to renew our mind with truth. We focus, we create new neural pathways to renew our mind with truth. And that process, empowered, infused with the life and the power of the Holy Spirit, changes us. So, Winning the war in your mind. If you go to war, right, the very first thing you do when you go into the army is you go where? Basic training, Basic training right? You're going to boot camp. And what do you do at boot camp? Like they literally, they're retraining you to do things, to respond to impulse responses differently. And they do the same thing over and over and over again until it's, I think, the, the, and like when you learn your multiplication tables, automaticity until it's just what you do because that's what you do when you get that stimulus response. It's the way you respond. Boot camp, right? So we're going to boot camp. You want to win the war in your mind. You want to go to war for your brain. We're going to have to do some things, and we're going to have to do them with focus and with intentionality. So last week we started on it, right? First question, what stronghold is holding you back? And I challenged you last week to identify your strongholds and to focus in on one. What is the dominant thing where your mental wires are crossed? Where the devil has trained you with mental pathways that don't serve you? What are those? What are, what are the strongholds was the first one? And I want to... I, I'm glad that you all did that last week, right? You all took some time to thank you, right? If you didn't, I'm giving you a second chance, right? A second chance. Invite God in that conversation. The psalmist prays, search me, O God, know my heart, test me, know my anxious thoughts. Sir, not just I'm going to think about what the thoughts are. God, you show me. You show me the, th the strongholds that are holding me back. And then when things start to come to your mind, just believe that God is showing what you just asked him to show you, not say, oh, I don't know where that thought came from. Wow, that's pretty random. Right. Search me, oh God, know my heart. Test me, know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Identify the strongholds holding you back. That's last week. And the second part, to answer the question, what spiritual truth 
from God's word demolishes that stronghold. What, what truth from God's word speaks to that stronghold and renders it for what it is, exposes it as a lie? We're replacing lies with truth, and then we're taking that truth, right? That's what we've done so far. And then writing a very specific response from that truth that we will then repeat over and over and over again. Every time we encounter that lie, we repeat it. Every time, every morning, we start the day. What's the truth? Repeating it. Because what we're doing when we repeat it is we're rewiring our brain. We're building new neural pathways. It's focusing our, ten- um, our attention. It's meditation. Write it out, type it, whatever, however you do that. And then start thinking about it. Confess it, repeat it, repeat it until you believe it. So um, I've got about 10 examples, and you're not going to hear all of them this morning. I'm going to save a few of them. I just I want to give you one example. I did this exercise, it's um, back in the um, beginning of March. Uh, so I'm just going to give you one example from a, a stronghold in my life that was not taking me in a place that I want to go and a statement that I wrote in response to that, right? So the, the stronghold was that I look at the world, these are some of my, my ruminations, and I look at culture and I look at politics and economics and all this stuff that's going on, and you read the news every day, and, and all these, you know, more and more mass shootings, and more and more hostility, and, and freeway, sh- I mean, just, it's like everything seems like it's getting crazier and crazier and crazier, and, and it's, it's, it feels out of control, and it feels out of control, nations against nation, and, and neighbors against neighbors, and, and and there are, there are these massive issues that we're, that we're facing in our culture, and it seems like everybody who's trying to address those issues on any kind of scale is doing it in very small-minded ways. It's like, I'm just like, where does this all... And, I, and, and all of that just creates anxiety in me. So here's what I believe. Here's what the truth of God tells me. This is a statement that I wrote, and I can, every one of these is grounded in Scripture. And I, and I wrote this as a prayer. God, the hope of your kingdom, the hope of your kingdom, not this world, the hope of your kingdom is the anchor of my soul. I'm waiting expectantly for the renewal of all things, seeking your kingdom above all else. A citizen of that kingdom now, I know I'll never be at home in this world. Things are going crazy. This is not my home. I know I'll never be at home in this world, but my present sufferings here will not be worth noting in light of the future glory to be revealed. So I endure hardship as discipline, knowing it will produce a harvest of righteousness when I've been trained by it. When I, of course life here is hard because this is not the world that I was made to live in. But there is a world that's coming that I was made for and I'm embracing that and believing in it now and understanding that the things that I'm going through on the way to that end are things that God is using me to prepare me for the future kingdom coming. I read this every day. Every day. And sometimes multiple times a day to rewire the neural pathways. So what's the stronghold? What's the truth? And then write a statement that addresses that stronghold with the truth and try and fit some, something that compels you towards that. So this, I really want this. I desire this. It's moving you in that direction. And then repeat it every day. And when you start to worry, repeat it again and again and again and again. Um, there are lots of resources that go along with it. I'm going to give you um, one this morning. Uh, again, I, I'm borrowing a lot of this content from Craig Rochelle, Credit Where Credit's Due. He has, um, um, if, if you have the version Bible uh, on your phones, if you have a, a, a smartphone, um, then you need to have the version 
app on it. Okay, just go on Uversion, t download it. It's it's a it's just a great tool. I make it my goal to use my Uversion app more than all my other apps. Uh, I don't succeed, um, but I but I try. Right, the Uversion. It, it's just it's the Bible, and then there are some reading plans that you can come along. If you use the Uversion app, there's a reading plan called. Oh wow, am I gonna go blank? I am. Oh shoot, I should have written it down. Um, I'll, I'll post it on the Facebook feed, and I'll put it on a Facebook page. Um, but it's, it's by, wow. Oh, the brain is such a terrible thing to waste. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> but not so soon. Okay, anyway, I will get that information to you. Um, it's, a, it's by Craig Rochelle. It's, it's about um, writing. It's a three-day study. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'll get it to you. Actually, you know what? I'll give it to you at the benediction. Don't leave. Don't close out on the closing. I'll have it for you at the benediction because I want this. It's just a three-day um, tool that walks you through identifying strongholds, determining truth, writing a statement. Right? You just walk you through it step by step. I want you. I want you to use that because it's a, just a, it's a resource toward this end. Okay? So, Lord, thank you that you have. Um, pre provided us with and, and preserved over millennium the truth of your word that you, that you spoke to and provided, inspired the prophets to, to write so that we would know the truth about who you are and about who we are and about where we are. And to, and to in the midst of this crazy world and, and the challenges and struggles of our life, something to give us an anchor to bring us back to what we were meant for and made for and to who we are and to whose we are. And I pray, Lord, you would search our hearts and test our anxious thoughts and expose the strongholds and the lies that we're believing and the ruminations that are, that are stealing joy and purpose and direction from us. Identify the strongholds. Lead us to the truth. Give us the discipline and, and empower us and fuse us with the life of your spirit to focus, to meditate, to allow you to renew our minds in alliance with the scriptures and the amazing design of our brains that you put together that can be changed. And we want to be changed because they're taking us somewhere, Lord, and we want to go on the path that leads to life. We want to go, every one of us, regardless of what our beliefs are today, we want to go on the path that leads to life. And our brains, most of us, are not taking us there. For those of us who believe that the path that leads to life is a path that leads to you, God, show us the truths and help us walk in the discipline of that. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'm going to ask our worship team to lead us in a closing song. And don't leave, because I'm going to have that for you before you walk out of here today, okay? Thanks.
watching my thunder. I see the spirit bursting out in a mighty flood over everyone. I hear the sound of sons and daughters. I see the old dream wild and young imagining. Young and old will dream. As promised, Words to Live By with Craig Rochelle. You version app, Words to Live By with Craig Rochelle. If uh, you're uh, already one of my friends on my You version app, I will share it with everybody who's in my friend. Um, I think maybe, Ron, could you get that link? Maybe you can, maybe you can't, in the, in the Facebook feed. I'll put it on the website, Words to Live By with Craig Rochelle. Day one is actually um, listen to, uh, is instructs you to listen to a message that Craig Rochelle preached on this. He's an incredible speaker. It will inspire you. It will challenge you. And you all say, wow, I think Tim said a lot of this stuff. Um, and, and that will be true, too, because, um, you know, anyway. So, um, but... You've heard a lot of it already, so if you don't have time to listen, you can skip that part of it. Just go to day two and three. Great resource. So, we're to live by with Craig Shell. Go with God's grace. Walk and live in love and the power of His Spirit. Go in peace. You're going to have to think differently to get there, not to pieces.